What's up, hackers? Welcome back to another episode of Hack Crypto, where we hack all of our Web3 education. If you guys are brand new here, be sure to slap a like on this video. It gets it out to more people entering the Web3 space. And in this video, I'm going to be diving into Bitcoin's hash rate. Now, if you guys are brand new to Bitcoin, welcome. And it is the gold standard for the space. And a lot of people over the years have always said like, hey, Ethereum's gonna overtake Bitcoin and all these different blockchains are going to overtake Bitcoin or people saying, oh, blockchain, not Bitcoin, things like that. But ultimately Bitcoin was the first and it is the one that defined what blockchain is. A lot of different iterations have happened over the years, forks, all sorts of crazy things have happened, but Bitcoin is the badger that just keeps on going. Bitcoin is secured by a algorithm called proof of work. This means that people can put computers to work to solve equations that help support the security of the blockchain. In order for this to be a decentralized, true peer-to-peer -peer protocol, what needs to happen is a bunch of people need to work together to compute that transaction for me to send to you. So a bunch of people give a thumbs up that say, I am me, you are you, and it can complete the transaction on what's called the blockchain. I'm not a trader by any means. What I like to do is cover all of the basics, and this definitely classifies as the basics. When it comes to on-chain data, I love tracking all things that are hash rate, distribution of different mining pools, and everything over the past history of Bitcoin's 10 plus years. So what I want to do in this video is I want to go over the current volume on the network. I want to talk about the hash rate. I want to talk about the connection between hash rate and price, how people see it different ways. Some people say that hash rate follows price and miners, many that I know, most that I know would say price follows hash rate, mainly because if your mining operation is unprofitable when the price is low, you are more likely to not continue. If it is higher, the price of Bitcoin, then you are likely to invest more because your margin is fatter. You have more room for error there. In the past, I've even worked with blockchain.com. And what I want to do in this video is dive onto their website and go through the network difficulty and the hash rate and the distribution, as well as the price currently and how it looks relative to the hash rate and the network itself, all the on-chain metrics. So I'm going to dive on to their website and dive into network difficulty first. As you can see here, the blue line represents the difficulty that is skyrocketing. It is at its all time high. And usually miners aren't going to be operating by difficulty. It's not something that they're going to be focused on. They're going to be focused on price and cost of electricity. Those are the two key drivers of any miner out there. So what you have here is skyrocketing network difficulty. And this is the measure of how difficult it is to mine a Bitcoin block or in more technical terms, to find a hash below a given target. A high difficulty means that it will take more computing power to mine the same number of blocks. So really clean, clear cut definition there. And I like that it lays out both the price and the difficulty here. Next up, we have the total hash rate. And this is the estimated number of terahashes per second the Bitcoin network is performing in the last 24 hours at an all time high here in October, 2023. Mining hash rate is a security metric. The more hashing computing power in the network, the greater the security is in the overall resistance to the attack. This attracts more investors because they know that it is more and more secure and it is less resistant to an attack. Although Bitcoin's exact hash rate power is unknown because you have a ton of machines running on the network, it's possible to estimate from the number of blocks being mined and the current block difficulty. So if you guys have heard the term having, that is the amount of Bitcoins that are released to miners gets cut in half, which is a beautiful, beautiful design. So this is the really important metric here that I've been following very closely. The total hash rate skyrocketing right now. Total number of transactions almost at the peak of November 2021 when the price was at 64,000, we are all the way back there. We are back to the exact same amount almost of transactions, uh, which is pretty incredible to think about. At the peak, we are all the way back. And you can see down here in 2017, it came back up and tipped that, uh, that all-time high of the number of transactions. So this is a basic metric to show the usage of the network. Lastly, I want to go over the hash rate distribution. A lot of people don't really care about this, but I do. I think that it is a true sign of decentralization. Now, the unknown section doesn't mean that the network is under attack or anything like that at a 51% attack. This is just because there are just so many machines out there mining that they can't just measure all of them. It's just not, not possible. Probably tens of thousands, if not a million. Uh, so Amp Pool 
is one of the biggest, of course, F2 pool is one of the biggest via Bitcoin. I've actually interviewed them on the channel before. That is uh, actually gone down a little bit. Foundry USA is a massive one uh, that is gaining a lot of momentum here. Poolin uh, and then Slush Pool and then Binance Pool, Huobi Pool, SBI Crypto, Mara Pool. Now, lastly, I wanna go over the Bitcoin price versus hash rate. So this is the chart here that is the hash rate in the purple and then the price that is the blue. And this is from Bitbo. So when you scroll down here, let's dig into this uh, Bitcoin price versus hash rate explained. So there's a lot of criticisms on this chart and people would assert that traders might be able to determine the direction prices will go based on how much hash power is being lost or added to the network. If hash rate goes down, this might indicate bearishness on the part of the miners or weakness in the market causing downward pressure on the price. So a lot of people are using ASICs. Uh, they find themselves in the most efficient way buy up hardware and as someone who has gone into mining before it is very tricky so this chart does a good job of uh, explaining the connection over a long period of time since the inception of bitcoin so it's a beautiful chart and i like that it is uh, you know basically taking both sides it's criticizing it saying there is no correlation between price and hashing power so overall in my opinion i do believe the hash rate is connected to the price because what you have is Miners that are entering into the space, they are powering up machines, hash rate is going up, and in turn, they are investing more and more and more into it. There's less downward pressure on that price. When you don't have that sell side pressure from the miners, you can see that they are investing, turning on more machines, driving that hash rate up. I like to see that. And when you see that, you can see that miners are confident, the security of the network is at an all time high, and this breaks open the gates to investors where they see the investment from the key holders that are the miners they see these pools supercharging their stack of miners and they see that people are investing in the network they see that transactions are hitting an all-time high and they see that there is activity taking place so therefore they invest so it is a very psychological thing where you're following these miners who control the network so this isn't financial advice and i don't really do trading indicators at all but before the halving is well known to be an accumulation area where everything's choppy for a while and people are all saying oh you're gonna get crazy sub 20k bitcoin you're gonna get ten thousand dollar bitcoin just crazy crazy talk and usually what happens is it just chops for a long period of time and then after the having a little while after things start to pick up pace people start to really notice like wow there's a ton of mining operations spinning up right now huge industrial operations and commercial operations are spinning up that hash rate is going up and the difficulty changed after the halving of releasing less Bitcoin when a block is mined. And you have just all of these ingredients baked into a bull run. So I'm really excited to see the bull run kicking off here at the end of 2023 and definitely stick around on the channel if you guys wanna follow the next run up. Having been in the space since 2013, operated mining rigs, all that good stuff, uh, this will be my third bull market. And it is very exciting. A lot of crazy emotions happen. And what's really important is just making yourself comfortable, trying not to pay too close attention to price, really enjoying what happens with the actual network itself during the halving, because it is a historic halving that takes place. And just try to ride the, the ride. Don't try and time everything. Just hodl, hang out, get vocal on social media and have some fun because it is a very psychological challenge to go through when you see the price dropping 30% in a day or going up 30%. It's just a, a, a huge, a huge hurdle to get over. So that's my tips. Just ignore the price for the most part, check in from time to time and try to enjoy the ride. So that is it for this video. I hope it helps you guys kind of differentiate the hash rate all time high and the price, how miners think about this. I know Seth Estrada and a lot of my mining friends out there are probably cursing my name <laughs> for, for talking about this or saying that it's incorrect, but ultimately the hash rate is connected to price. Whether they pull, you know, one pulls the other up, uh, you know, I believe that they are connected because it is the mindset of the miners that have to be profitable and that margin matters for these huge large scale operations. So that is it for my video. Slap a like on this video if you want to see more Bitcoin content and I will see you here on the next episode of Hack Crypto.